guys, welcome to one of my favorite tutorials I've ever made. I hope you guys have as much fun with this workflow as I did. Today we're going to talk about how to turn your footage into this surreal anime video game style. This is inspired by Jlex Rosa, in my opinion one of the coolest people uh, putting out VFX centered content on YouTube. Super entertaining, I love this guy, I've been following him for a long time. Here's his how I transformed myself into Sasuke from Naruto video, where he's able to go from this into this. So some really amazing things you can do here from a music video standpoint or any other type of video, short film, whatever. There's so many things that you can do with this process. The process of creating this cool animated um, flowing in the wind hair and being able to change around your facial features. I think you guys will find a ton of value in this. So the three main things that we're going to be talking about here. First off, we're going to talk about creating the hair system. I think this is the art of what makes this look really cool and adds that surreal look because you have this flowing 3D animated hair. So we'll talk about how to do that in Blender, which is a free 3D tool you guys can pick up if you haven't already. Next up, we're gonna talk about compositing everything together. So tracking the hair into your footage with an After Effects. And then we're gonna add in some final touches using Photoshop as well as After Effects to be able to take the person, the subject matter in your shot and add more of this fantasy element onto them. If you guys do enjoy, February was a rough month for YouTubers as a whole. So I'd greatly appreciate it if you guys slap a like on the video. Like I said, greatly appreciated, but never required. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to stay up to date. So let's go ahead and get started. You're going to need three things to get started. The first off is your footage. What I did was use royalty free footage. You can of course do what JLEX did and shoot it in front of a green screen so that you have the proper setup. You can change the lighting, change the outfit, whatever. But I used royalty free footage here just to show you guys that you can really do this to anything as long as it fits the criteria. Criteria being you don't want to have too much motion. If you have too much motion or too much blurring, you're not going to get a good track. And that's really about it. Just make sure you have a good shot that you can track your hair and composite afterwards. You're going to need Blender, which I said is a free 3D software. So go ahead and download this if you don't already have it. And then you're going to need a 3D head model to build your hair on top of. So I found this free uh, 3D head model on Turbo Squid. You can just click download and uh, download the FBX. You can, of course, just search head on any of these free 3D sites. Just search by free, and you're gonna find hundreds of different um, templates that you can work off of. All right, so getting started within Blender, I do wanna mention, if you guys have this Keen Tools Face Builder plugin, which I've talked about in previous tutorials, you'll see this one right here, you can just click Create a New Head, and it actually has a free head model embedded within. So you could use that if you really would like to, may help with tracking or whatever. But what I'm gonna do is just use that free head we downloaded a little bit earlier. So we'll go up to File, Import, and I'll import in an FBX. So mine is right here. Let's go ahead and open that up. And what we're gonna do to get started, this actually is three different objects broken into one. You can see the eyes here and then the head. So what I'm gonna do is just hold down Control and just click and select each of those objects in my object menu up here in the top right. And then I'm going to click Control J just to connect that into one object. So we'll double click on this and name this head. Then I'll scroll out here and I'm going to click S and scale this up and then G just to freely move this around and I'll position this sort of in the center of our workspace here. So now let's click into our camera view. So you can click this button right here and you can see it's kind of a sideways angle. So I'm just going to click this yellow square, the object properties. Make sure you're selecting your camera when you do that. And I'm just gonna use these values to position my camera so that it is looking at the head at a straightforward angle. Okay, so pretty easy. Make sure that everything is in frame whenever you are doing this. Now I can just hold in my scroll wheel and move away from my camera view. So now let's start building our hair. So we're gonna select our head model here. And I'm gonna switch over to edit mode. So you can either click tab to go from, to go from object mode to edit mode, you can click this uh, drop down in the top left. Right now it's showing the vertices of this model. I prefer to select the faces. So I'm just going to go in the top left and go to face select. And then I'm gonna go and select all the areas on the head where we want our hair to grow from. So I can click and hold down on the select box and grab this select circle. And we can change the radius here if we need to. I'm just gonna hold down shift and start selecting the scalp area of the head. So make sure you use your mouse wheel to rotate and get all the angles. Then we can lower our radius a tiny bit and 
make this a little bit more exact. So something like that looks fine. Now I'm going to separate this selection from our main model. So we can click down here to our object data properties. And then in this vertex group section, we can go ahead and just click this plus sign. I'm going to double click on that and name that hair. And then I'll go ahead and click assign. So now let's switch back into object mode in the top left. And we're going to set up our hair particle system. Before we do so, let's go ahead and change some render settings. So I'll click over to our render properties tab and I'm going to check on ambient occlusion as well as screen space reflections. And I'm going to go ahead and change over to our viewport shading, our rendered shading. So in the top right, click that. Now you can see the light is affecting our model. But what we want to do from here is just click on our head model. You want to come down to your particle properties and you want to click the plus sign just to add a new system. So we're going to change this from emitter to hair. Now you can see all this crazy hair sprouting from the head. We want it to only be emitting from the scalp part that we designated earlier. So let's go down to the vertex groups. And for all these drop downs, let's just we're going to just click and we're going to select the hair for all of that. All right, so now we have this craziness sprouting from only the scalp. Let's go ahead and close that. We're going to go and check on advanced. And then we're going to check on hair dynamics. We can take the hair length for now and just lower that down. That's a little bit more manageable. And then let's go ahead and apply our hair color to our hair. So I'm going to go down to my material properties tab and I'm going to click this plus sign just to add a new material. We'll click new here and I'll double click and name that hair. From here, you can select that and just go down to your base color and just choose whatever hair color you'd like. So I'm going to go for more of this um, dark brown. And then to apply that material onto our hair, we're going to pop back over to our particle properties. And then down in the render section, we're going to go to this material drop down and just select hair. All right, so now we have our hair applied. And because we checked on hair dynamics, if I was to press play right here, you can see how the simulation is starting. We really just need to make our hair not look comedic at this point. What we can do is open up hair dynamics, quality steps. It's up to you what you want to put this. The higher you put it, the higher the simulation will be. Um, I like to keep it around something like 10. For hair shape, let's go to the diameter root here and make that something like 0 0.1. And let's also pop back over to our render properties in the hair section here. Let's change this hair shape type from strand to strip. So a bit more fine point here. We go back to our particle and down to our hair shape. You see, if we take that diameter root, we can now fully control that. So keep it more fine like that. I'm also going to increase the tip a tiny bit. Back up top in emission, let's go ahead and change the segments to something like eight. And you guys can control the number of hair particles here. I'll keep that at the default at 1000. The main way to change things around will be under children here. So let's change it to interpolated. And you can see it looks a little bit more realistic here. Let's scroll down. Your display amount and your render amount, you guys can change that around depending on the type of hair you are making. All it does is increase the amount of hair that's being placed in here. I'm going to check on long hair because I'm going to go for more flowy uh, type hair. But of course, it's really up to you guys. Because this is starting to get pretty long, let's go back up here and um, under a mission, just keep bumping down the hair length a bit. Something like that, 0 0.12. So back down to children. So under this kink section here, you guys can take the kink type and change this. If you want curly hair, you can add radial, you can have radial wave uh, braid. It really just changes the type of emission. I like to keep it on braid, but for now we'll just put it on nothing. And we're actually gonna come back uh, to these sections a bit. So let's first groom our hair and style our hair to our liking. So what I'm going to do is switch from object mode into the particle edit mode. And before you do do this, make sure that all of these settings are set up properly because you're not going to be able to change this after the fact. You'll have to delete the edits. You can change around uh, the children properties a bit to tweak the look. But in terms of all this, the number, the length, make sure that's locked in before you do this. So we're going to go and change to particle edit and to be able to see what we had earlier you want to click up in the top right there should be a little arrow here I've already extended it but once you click that arrow go ahead and click on tool and then you want to go to options and check on children now we're back to where we were this is a pretty cool tool you want to select comb here and you can change your radius or your strength right there you can also click f change the radiance and uh, shift f to change strength you can just click and drag down here to sort of comb the hair to your liking. Do a little basic shaping here. 
You can also go and click on the cut tool if you need to cut anything, for example, use that. We'll go back to comb. There's also smooth and some other things. I'd only recommend smooth or puff just so you don't mess anything up. You do have that option if you really need it. So you puff. All right, so it looks pretty basic here, but this should be fine for now. We can keep playing around with the look. Uh, to do that, let's go back into our object mode. And then back in the children's section here of our particle system, you can open up parting and kind of just play with these sliders uh, to tailor the look. So if we clump everything up, you can have things with some more gaps uh, or more clumped together. Down here in roughness, if you guys want to have more of that anime style hair where it's a little bit spiky, you can take your endpoint here and just start up pumping that up a little bit. And that's pretty close to what I was looking for there. It's really optional to you guys. You can mess around with any of these sliders. Add in a tiny bit of random here. And let's try and just comb this a little bit now back and back in our particle edit mode at some of these parts down. Okay, so back in object mode, go down to hair shape. Again, you can keep messing with um, this for any more added look. So yeah, just use those settings there to make the hair look how you want. You use the comb in the particle editing mode to make any of your adjustments and then any of the children. So once you have the style that you're looking for, let's go ahead and add the animation here. We can do that pretty easily. Now keep in mind here, a lot of this is going to fall down once we click play with our hair dynamics because of the gravity. So what we want to do under hair dynamics here where you have your pin goal strength, let's go ahead and set that to something like 0.6. This will essentially just kind of um, retain the hairstyle when you press play. Whenever I press play here, you'll see how it sets a little bit more evenly. It's not kind of falling all crazy. You can raise that up if you really need to. So now let's go in and add our wind. We're going to go ahead and click Shift A, and then we're going to go down to Force Field and just add in wind. So this is what's going to add that flowing animation to our hair. We can just go over like we did with the camera to Object Properties with our wind selected. We can use our Object Properties just to sort of uh, rotate this so that it's pointing towards our head. Maybe scale this down to like 0 0.5. Now let's just go ahead and keyframe some wind. So we wanna have some variation so it has more of that flowing effect. So let's go down here to our physics properties with wind selected and right where it says strength, we're gonna go ahead and just start at zero and click to set a keyframe. Then we're gonna scroll a couple of frames. And we're gonna bounce this strength property up something around 20, I'd say, set a keyframe. And then you guys can go ahead and press play and sort of get a rough little preview of that where you can see the wind is flowing in this direction. Also, keep in mind here, everything always looks better in the render. So don't worry too much uh, if things don't look too good in your um, uncached simulation. Also, if my camera freezes up a little bit, it is because this is a bit computer intensive. So make sure you are saving your project. Let's keep going here with the wind and setting those keyframes. All right, so we set up our keyframes so that our wind is affecting our hair. What I'm going to do is pop over to the head here. We're going to go back to our particle properties and let's go down to cache. So we only keyframed about 150 frames. So, so before we bake that, you can just set that to the end 150 and then click bake. Let's just pop into our camera view, make sure everything is framed right. That looks fine. Now we can set up our render. So let's go back to our render settings and we're going to go to film and check on transparent. And you see here how the head isn't transparent. What we can do is just apply a quick little mask. So we're going to go in the top right and just create a new collection. And then we're going to select the head, click Control C, Control V. And you'll see how it pastes this duplicated head into collection two. Next, let's go up to the top right under filters and we'll just check on the restrictions for our mask. And then for this collection, let's click this little bubble and make it a mask. And you see how everything goes invisible. We only want the head to be invisible. We can select this duplicated head in our second collection. We're going to go down to our particle properties. And for the particle settings, just click this negative to delete it. So now you have this transparent camera set up with just your hair, with just your particle properties. We can now render this and bring it back into After Effects. So let's go over to our output properties. Uh, 1920 by 1080 make sure your frame rate here is matching the frame rate of your footage so i think mine was so i think the footage i'm using is 25 frames per second frame start and frame end again we only did about 145 frames so let's maybe just put this end to 150 and then for our output here we can click and create a new folder where we want to output it 
So I'm just going to right click new folder and we'll name this tutorial render. Make sure you double click in there and accept. And then for the file formats, I like using uh, TIFF instead of PNG. We'll change that to TIFF. Make sure your color is RGBA so that we're exporting with that transparent background. So now you are all ready to go. If you really want to, you can change around uh, the lighting. So with our light in here, all the way up there, if I was to select that and click G and move this around, you can see how it's changing around the reflection on the hair. So if you want the best, most realistic results, I recommend you try and mimic the lighting setting, the light setting from your actual footage that you're trying to composite into. I'm just going to keep it at the default for now. Of course, you can add an HDRI environment or whatever, just to add a bit more reflections, but this looks fine for me. So pop into our camera view, go up to render, and we will click render animation. And there we go. This is going to render out. I'm rendering in EV right now, which is a lot faster. If you guys want super high quality results, um, you could change to the cycles render, which is again in your render properties, but I won't mess with that now while we're exporting out. So let's render this out and bring this back into After Effects. All right, guys, so our render is complete. Let me turn off my camera um, just because After Effects eats up a lot of memory and it'll be a bit easier to see the composition here. So let's go ahead and fire up After Effects. All right, everyone. So in After Effects, let's go ahead and create a new composition here. So first I'm gonna bring in the footage, the royalty free footage that I got right here. We can just drag this into there, right click, transform and fit to comp. And we'll put this on third quality just so nothing lags. Now let's bring in our hair from Blender so we can right click in our project bin on the left, go to import multiple files, and then we'll find the folder that I saved. So tutorial render, just select the first image here. You can see our TIFF sequence. Make sure TIFF sequence is checked on, import as footage, and import. Then click OK, and then done. And if I check on the transparency here, you can see everything is fully transparent. We can press play and, and get a little look of our rendered animated hair here. And this looks pretty cool. I did do multiple versions, so I think I'm going to go with the other version, the original version I used for that intro cinematic. I think this one looks a little bit cool, a bit more motion, and I like the style a bit better. So of course, feel free to experiment with everything. Go back into our tutorial comp, and we'll just drag in the hair here. Now, one thing After Effects does for some reason, it always imports these image sequences at a frame rate of 30. So as you see here, our footage is 25 frames per second. If you're not seeing that, just extend there. You want to right click on your image sequence go to interpret footage and then main. And then you want to assume the frame rate of 25 or again, whatever your footage frame rate is and then click OK. So there's a bit of craziness at the beginning. Um, I can just grab this right click trim comp to work area. And then composition comp settings. If we need any more time. Add like a minute there. And again, wherever there's a lot of movement, that may mess up our track. So I'm going to go until about like right here. And then we'll right click and trim comp to work area. All right, so we got a nice little area where we can apply this hair. Now, as you see, if I was just to drag this hair over, um, it's not tracked on. So let's first get that settled. We'll just go ahead and hide that for now. We're going to right click on our main footage here and we're going to go to track and stabilize and track the motion. But before I do that, because I actually scaled this down to fit the comp earlier, I'm just going to first right click recompose and just move all the attributes into this new composition. That way we don't run into any issues with our camera tracking. So now I can right click on it, track and stabilize, track the camera. And you'll know that it's good when you see this larger blue bar. If it's like a shrunken blue bar, you'll want to pre-compose first. We'll go ahead and let After Effects track the motion. And of course, this is optional if you prefer to track in Blender. You could always track it into your footage in Blender, but this is a pretty solid track. And if you're not getting a lot of uh, object data here, make sure it's not too blurry. Make sure there's not too much movement. Looks fine. We'll click create camera. So now that we have our 3D camera, you want to click toggle switches and modes here. You want to enable this hair footage, rename this hair as a 3D layer. So check that on. And then what we're going to do is just find a nice little reference point for the hair. So Select the footage. To see the object data again, you want to click on in your effect controls, the 3D camera tracker. 
And let's just select somewhere on the face here, like right there, we'll right click, and we're gonna click create solid. And maybe we'll just click S and scale that up a bit. Maybe change the orientation a tiny bit, and that looks okay. So just make sure this track is looking solid. You can right click and rename this track solid to um, hair track info. So we'll hide this, hide the visibility. What we're gonna do is just parent this hair to the hair track info uh, reference point we set up. So you can either pick whip or just under parent and link hair track info. Let's show that again. And then to place it in our reference area, you wanna open up the transform and just click reset. So now what we can do is we can grab our anchor point, we can scale it up, and we can ultimately just try and fit it to the head as best as we can. Click play, it's looking a lot better. Obviously there's some rough areas that we need to deal with. So an awesome tip for this, you guys can actually go to your effects and presets and search for liquify, drop that onto your hair. And you can grab this liquify tool, this first one there, Let's change the brush size a bit. And you can use this just to sort of shape it to the head a bit better. That looks pretty cool. Here's a little close up of that. Now, if you ever have any issues here, like things bleeding through, you can easily fix that just by creating a simple little mask. So I'll click G on my keyboard to bring up my pen tool. I'll just draw a mask like around here. And then I'm gonna click M to bring up those mask options and just change that from add to subtract. If you ever need to, you can keyframe the mask path if anything's cutting off that you don't want to. All right guys, now one of the things that can blend 3D animations with real life is by adding a tiny bit of noise and a tiny bit of blur. These are just things that um, you're naturally gonna have from a camera. So applying them to your 3D animations can help. Check some presets, search for noise, drop that onto your hair. And I usually go like 5%, check off, use color noise, maybe even a little bit lower. And you can use any type of blur. Let's try a fast let's try a fast box blur. I'll maybe go 0 0.5 on that. You can see a little bit of the difference there just to blend it with the footage a tiny bit more. All right, so that is how you track on your hair and how you shape it and composite it into your footage. What I'm going to show you now is a bit of extra steps for improving the look, making things look a bit more surreal, like it's in this anime video game style. So for example, you can see the face and skin uh, in this shot. As opposed to the original here, you can just see some of the difference. Just did a simple little skin cover up, and you can do this with a skin cover up, or you can do this with adding different elements to the face. Some little test shots I did here, tracking on different things like this. The way we're gonna do that is by using Photoshop. And if you look at Jalix's videos, he actually uses this method a lot. He uses Photoshop as well as EB Synth and some other AI tools to be able to kind of create that surreal, um, out from a different world look. As you can see, these reference images that he's using in Photoshop, these are actually AI generated stills. I'm pretty sure he's even Photoshopping facial features from this render and using those AI tools just to be able to composite them a bit better changing the eyes for example there so you can go all out if you really want to or if you want to turn yourself into some sort of full-blown monster or demon thing like he does in a lot of these other videos like he does here with applying all these different photoshop elements all you have to do is apply all this photoshop stuff to one still and then you can use that eb synth software which will use ai to automatically apply it to the entire video which is awesome so let's hop into Photoshop and do some of those custom adjustments. You can bring this into Photoshop just by going up to Composition, Save Frame As, and then Photoshop Layers. And I'm not gonna show you the steps I did in Photoshop. I'm just gonna do a little time lapse here and I'll leave a link to the tutorial that I used for the face touch up down below. I just wanna really take this time to mention the powers of this EV Synth software and being able to use EV Synth to apply that style to every frame in your video. Once you are ready to apply how this still looks to your entire video animation, what you need to do is first hop into Adobe After Effects. I'm gonna hide the visibility of our hair layer for now and I'm just gonna go up to File, Export. I'm going to export it as a PNG sequence. I'll select a little folder for that. So go ahead and download EV Synth open it up and we're going to start setting this all up. Wherever it says keyframe, go ahead and select the still that you saved from Photoshop. So mine was called face alter. 
And then in the video section, go ahead and select the first frame in the folder that you just exported from After Effects. So the normal footage without any of the adjustments. Also keep in mind here, the keyframes need to correspond. So if I double click in my folder here, it starts at composition 010 and goes to 040. I need to make sure my keyframe starts at 10 and goes to 40. This is an awesome software, literally ran pretty quick and I was able to get this result, which is pretty solid without doing any tracking or having to do any other steps within After Effects. So pretty great. And it really just goes to show you some of the things that you can do with AI tools like Artbreeder or like EB Synth to really speed up your workflow and do things that you normally wouldn't be able to do. And you can use EB Synth with crazier methods. Here's a little example of me just going in um, and creating another altered version of the face just by adding different blood or whatever. I could just swap out the keyframe in EB Synth, run it again, and we get a different result. So now what we're going to do is just change the eye color. This is something I've talked about before. Give it that um, anime style eyes. And then we're going to show you some secret sauce within Adobe Premiere. So creating the eye replacement was pretty simple. I just searched up the eye model that I would like to use, right click and saved it, and then brought it into After Effects. I used my pen tool just to create a little mask around the eye so that I could isolate it from the rest of the image. And then what I did was right clicked on my footage and clicked track motion to set up a little motion track. Before we go through with the tracking motion, we want to create a null object, place the tracking info. You want to right click in your gray space and just go to new null object. I'm going to right click and name this left eye track. I know it's his right eye, but calling it left eye just makes it easier in my brain. You want to go and change the target to your right eye track or whatever null object you set up and click play to get your track. I'm going to go ahead and click apply and then OK to apply that tracking data onto our null object. And then it's as easy as just going over to our eye layer that we set up and changing the parent to the right eye tracking info. From here, it's really just some blending, tiny bit of masking in case they blink or whatever. What I did was just change the blending mode to something like add or screen. But of course, you can play around with the blending modes depending on what you are making. You can, of course, add curves effects onto the hair or the eyes to fully color correct them. You can add an After Effects glow effect to the eyes as well if you want to make them pop a bit more. Just make sure you raise the radius and play with the threshold and the intensity to finalize that look. And that's everything we need to do within After Effects. So I'm going to file save my After Effects composition here. And I'm gonna go ahead and fire up Premiere to do my final color grading. So in Adobe Premiere, click this little page and create a transparent video. I'll drag that transparent video into my timeline and just give it a bit more room. And then I'll right click on the transparent video and click replace with After Effects composition. This will create a little dynamic link between Premiere and After Effects. So all I need to do is delete the little transparent video in this composition and drag in the finished comp that we are working on in After Effects into this placeholder. I'll just trim the comp in the work area, file save, and then easy as that, back in Premiere, we now have all our work from After Effects ready in Premiere. So from here in my color workspace, I went ahead and just added some of the basics, things like going in the creative and adding in some of these LUTs that I've downloaded you can find a bunch of these on my website if you are interested, just to change around the overall vibe and colors. I also went into basic correction, just added a bit of contrast, changed a bit of the curves, added a bit of vignette just to kind of focus on the center here. To make everything pop, I went to my effects and presets and I searched for an unsharpened mask. I put the amount up to about 100. You don't want to go overboard with this especially if you're rendering with lower settings. But I thought 100 just added more of a fantasy feel to it. I think it's definitely a nice little subtle touch. I went to my curves and just tried to add a tiny bit of an S curve, um, played around with that just to see the type of uh, looks I could get by playing around with the lighting. So feel free just to experiment here and make it look good. And then some final touches, some secret sauce here at the end. I applied a star glow preset, which is actually from my preset pack three Again, available on my website. Nice little easy drag and drop finishing effect just to add these little uh, light streaks that are glaring through. They're pretty crazy at the start, so I just went into my effect controls and lowered the opacity on those a bit. And then one final little tip, but it is an important one. It is a pretty cool one. What I'm gonna do is just export this out so that I'm not messing around with my After Effects compositions. I made sure to use a higher bit rate just so I could retain a lot of that quality with the sharpen. I exported it out as CBR with a max bit rate of 40. I dragged in the exported clip back into Premiere. And what I like to do is actually right click and nest the clip, right click on that nested clip and go to speed and duration. 
I like to change the speed down to 60. And I like to apply optical flow. Once you click and go up to render selection, you can see what this looks like all processed out. I think it just gives it more of a dreamy sort of pacing to everything. And that's about it, guys. I hope you did enjoy this. Like I said, a very enjoyable experience, in my opinion, taking someone and really transforming them into this cool, crazy um, fantasy style. If this sparked any ideas for you, comment down below. I'm super excited to see what you guys put together. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. And I'll see you in the next video.